This is Binghamton Now on News Radio 1290, WNBF Binghamton, and WNBF.com. I'm Bob Joseph. Today is Tuesday, September 3rd. You are listening to WNBF's Binghamton Now. Call a program if you wish. Our number is 607-772-1290. Call in or just sit back and listen to Binghamton Now. WNBF. And so it begins. We start September on a positive note. Everything seems to be in order here at Binghamton Now. Looking forward to uh, speaking with you if you have thoughts about almost anything under the sun or at least in the uh, current situation in downtown Binghamton in the middle of the fog will become a sunny day today we're looking forward to a beautiful late summer day around the Twin Tiers some pleasant weather expected this week so that's a, a great thing if you want to discuss what your plans are. Let's look forward. September, October, November, and December, we have four months to fill to come up with the greatest things of 2024. Great things have already occurred over the last eight months, and we can expect some very interesting things. Will there be an October surprise? Yes. Will there be A September surprise. Yes, there will be surprises. So buckle up, buckle up. That's the beauty of living in interesting times. There will be surprises. Don't be worried. Do not be unduly alarmed. Everything will be fine. We'll get through it together. But yes, trust me, surprises are inevitable. And, of course, here at WNBF, we'll report on some of the local news and uh, also offer you the latest national and world developments with ABC News and AP stories. Who knows? Who knows, really, what we uh, will be seeing over the next four months. First eight months of the year went by quickly, and... um, I'm sure before you know it, we'll be celebrating in Times Square and uh, looking forward to 2025 with all the excitement that year promises. Let's take a call. Why not? Why not start things off on the right foot with a phone call? 607-772-1290. Good morning. You're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? It's Rich from the town of Tioga, Bob. Hey, Rich. How are things in the town of Tioga? Well, you know, our banana republic we live in now is swimmingly moving along. And I love to see that Venezuela is taking a page out of our playbook and arresting the opposition leader. Yeah, and I see the United States now has possession of his uh, <laughs> of his plane, such as it is. Had to look up on on the um, internet to find out what HSI was, because all the HSI police were surrounding the dictator's plane, and um, the U.S. apparently has has taken over what is essentially, effectively, his Air Force One. Although, to me, it looks looks tiny. It looks it's almost embarrassing for that plane to be used by the president of a country. The plane Jeff Bezos just got is uh, far nicer and, and I think has a greater capacity. But, yeah, you know, problems in Venezuela are very, very interesting. And in China. Yeah. What did you say about China? I said Tim will also love to fly that to China when he's vice president. No, he's not a pilot, so he's not going to be... <laughs> He hasn't even claimed to be a pilot, so give him credit for that. At least not yet. He's he's never said anything about his piloting skills. I'm just waiting for for uh, Bob and Vestal to call in. It's been a long week last week, Bob. I was, you know, I was almost like withdrawal. I'm not an addict, but if I was, not hearing Bob's voice 
is like going through withdrawal and yours for that matter. Well, I'm glad to be back. I uh, it is good. It's it's good to be where I am meant to be, and I really appreciate your uh, calling in. And stay tuned. As I said in my opening remarks, we're in for a lot of surprises. Uh, you All can bet. Coming. You can bet over the next. They're coming. Yeah, over the next sixty-three days, as as they once sang, a Canadian group once uh, made <laughs> made popular. But 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 baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Nothing yet. <laughs> Thank, hey, yet. thanks, Rich. And there you go. That's the story from the town of Tioga making contemporary news on this September third. So we are now exactly nine weeks away from Election Day. So that's why we're in such a good mood. The best, the best mood, (laughs) the very best. Let's see. It's been a while since I've done a weather forecast. I, I wonder if I remember how to do this. I'm going to do this. from the talk deck without a net. So, wish me luck, folks. I haven't uh, read a weather forecast now in, oh, I guess probably a week and a half, so hopefully it'll go well. The following weather forecast is not, is not presented by Boeing. So it probably will go well. Here's your forecast from the National Weather Service. Yes, indeed, some patchy fog this morning for another hour or so in parts of the Binghamton area. Otherwise, sunny today, high 72. Clear tonight, low 48. Sunny tomorrow, high 77. And sunny Thursday, high 76. Sounds like a pretty darn good forecast to me. Right now, it's 48 in downtown Binghamton, 9 Celsius. Right here at News Radio, WNBF, WNBF.com. And early voting will begin soon. I, for one, can't wait. <laughs> Gee, I have no idea how I'm going to vote this year. Well, I guess that'll depend on which candidates actually call in for interviews here on the station. I'll vote for the first presidential candidate who calls, 607-772-1290. I'm kidding. Well, Bob, you said I'm kidding. But you must, you said. It's just a joke. I want, I want both candidates to call. Please. Let's see. What else? It's been a while since I've had the pleasure to uh, glance at the front page of the New York Times. Let's see. Tuesday, September 3rd. Hmm. The biggest stories are Dateline, Jerusalem, and Tel Aviv. The only U.S. story above the fold involves Nikki Haley. Dateline Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Okay, so Nikki Haley. <laughs> Dateline St. Paul. This is below the fold. Governor Tim Walls at the Minnesota State Fair. At home with butter carvings. Walls revels at the State Fair. For the governor of Minnesota, August was a dizzying climb to the highest echelons of politics. Since being selected as Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate, he has been the featured guest at glitzy private fundraisers, flown to more than a dozen states, and headlined a night at the Democratic Convention in Chicago with thousands in the arena hanging on his every word. On Sunday, he was back in more familiar territory, the Minnesota State Fair. I am so glad I don't have to do news stories from state fairs, whether it's New York or Minnesota. Mm. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy state fairs, but I 
I've never been impressed by any of the news coverage that emerges, whether it's uh, elected officials or candidates and what they eat at the state fair or virtually anything else. Or don't get me started on the butter sculpture. Please. He chomped on a pork chop on a stick. He admired the Dairy Princess butter carvings. <laughs> tell you, the New York Times is just trying to spoil my happy mood. He handed out ice cream at the Dairy Goodness bar counter and waved at the crowd, which was eager for a glimpse or a selfie with the governor, who for once got to eschew the formal suit and tie for his more comfortable T-shirt and Carhartt pants. All right. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. These state fair stories. <laughs> oh, that's another thing, though. If you did go to the state fair in uh, the Syracuse area, let me know what you thought. I didn't go to the state fair this year. I, I think the last time I was at the state fair, when was that? May have been 2020. Maybe 2021. It was fun. It was good times, and certainly a lot of food was consumed, as you must at a state fair. But uh, when I was there, there's nothing newsworthy. So if you went to the state fair this year in the Syracuse area, did you see anything remotely newsworthy? And let's not talk about the butter sculpture. I don't. That's the one topic that. I don't think I want to talk about today. We could talk about anything else at the New York State Fair. But we really don't have to talk about that. It's 922. This is Bob Joseph, live and local. Binghamton Now, 92.1 FM, 1290 AM, online at WNBF.com. More calls are coming right up at 607-772-1290. We're joined now by Karen Sweet O'Neill. This live segment is sponsored by KSO Insurance Solutions. Good morning. How are you? I am well. Yeah. And yourself? Great. Great. Good to be back. Yeah, right. That's what it <laughs> says on the teleprompter. That's right. It says, read with gusto. Read with gusto. It's great gusto. to be back. Oh, my gosh. You know what? You had a nice week, though, I'm assuming. Oh, wonderful and relaxing. Good. That's what it's about. So. Back to the grind, baby. Yes. Here we go. September. Buckle up, kids, for the September surprises. September (laughs) surprises straight ahead. What will you be discussing tomorrow morning? Uh, We are going to discuss preparation for up-and-coming events that could happen and how it's going to help make your, if you do depart, um, easier on your loved ones and just, um, you know, as in most things in life, Bob, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen in a lot of cases, but being prepared best we can can really help out certain circumstances, whether it's, you know, an accident or an illness or a death. You don't have to be scrambling. You know where things are. You know how to do it. You know where the passwords are and all of these types of things. So we're going to talk about that and how to kind of just make a list. And then it's done. And when it's done, you don't have to do it again unless you just have to add to it. But that's simple. So it's really important. And fall brings on those kinds of feelings, you know, where you want to complete the year. You want to complete things. So that's what we're going to talk about, how to do it, and name some things that you should really be prepared for, whether it's um, your will, health care proxies, you know, credit union accounts, checking accounts, all these things that can play a very, very important role if you need some help down the line. We are at 1708 Vestal Parkway East, up above Plato's Closet and Style Encore. You can reach us several ways. For an appointment, you can simply give us a call at 607-772-4898. You can Google us at KSO Insurance, and all our contact information comes up, including our website, make an appointment that way, or simply go to a phone book if you missed the phone number. We have a big display ad under insurance in the yellow pages. 
Sharon. We will speak tomorrow right around 920 here on WNBF. Sounds good, Bob. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Thanks. WNBF Live at 927. Remember, the free WNBF app will help you in your daily life. The latest information. Sometimes people come up to me and they say, Raj, how can I find out the latest stories from WNBF? And I say, well, Timmy, you could, of course, listen on the radio at 92.1 FM or 1290 AM. I know thousands of people do that, but you could also listen on the free WNBF app, and thousands of people can do that, too. So the app is free. Go to wherever it is where you get your free apps and download it onto your phone, and you will be able to enjoy WNBF. You can stay connected with Binghamton Now and First News Binghamton and all the other fine offerings from News Radio WNBF. It's the WNBF app. If you need more information, you can obtain it at WNBF.com. There's a little, I guess it's called a button, a little thing that you would click on at the top of the home page where it says app. And then there are two options, iOS or Android. And then go uh, using that drop-down menu to the appropriate section, and you too can have the app, and you too can stay connected like your kids. You'll impress your kids and your grandchildren. Look, I have the free WNBF app on my phone, so now I can stay connected with Binghamton now. It's 929. We return to the phones at 607-772-1290. Good morning. You're on the air. Hi, Bob. How you doing? I'm well. And this is Beverly from the town of Dickinson. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. We, we went to Dorchester Park on Sunday. Hardly anyone was there. It wasn't... Really? A lot of, yeah, because they can't swim up there. Oh, Why? Why can't you swim at Dorchester? Because uh, cause there, there's algae in the water. Oh, come on. When, but, when we were kids, that never stopped us. I know, but they, it, it's been closed all summer. Hmm. Algae, smalgy. I say, I say pay attention to the experts. If the experts, yeah, say, they, if the experts say don't swim, then don't swim. But I, I got to tell you, when I was growing up, we would never let a little bit of uh, deadly algae deter us from swimming in the summer. Yeah, well, they, well, they closed the, they didn't even open that, the swimming area this year. Hmm. Well, I, I didn't know that. Well, I guess the truth is I knew that earlier this year because I'm sure we had the original story about the algae, but I can say with... Um, great certainty. I didn't write the story, but now that you mention it, I, I do recall hearing it, but I, I didn't realize that there was no swimming for the entire season. Where is where is it? Which park? Uh, Dorchester. Oh. Huh. I'm glad I didn't drive up there on my vacation. I was your vacation. Oh, superb. Oh, that's good. You got a lot of rest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I liked. Sometimes... Believe it or not, sometimes I need I need some rest from the daily rigors of oh yeah of reporting. I know. Yeah. 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 But I, I gotta tell you. but on the bright side, it's great to be back. I I missed talking with all of our um, friends and missed talking with you. Yeah, we uh, we had a good time. There there was about twenty of us. Well, so did you? pack a picnic lunch oh god we we they cook we cooked up there and everything oh. the kids were they got some new equipment up there for kid for kids and we were watching them oh uh, like a, a new playground yeah yeah i i remember hearing about that i believe jason garner had had mentioned that they were going to do that i just don't get up to that park that often i'll have to uh make it a point to uh, go up to Dorchester. I haven't been to Dorchester Park or Grippen Park or Cole Park in a long time. We go up every year and have a family 
a family uh, reunion. Well, I say there's about 20 of us. Well, that's good. I'm glad you had a good time. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've been doing a lot of reading lately, and I, I wrote a poem for my grandson. Uh, uh, who's been gone yeah. at least four years in November. Yeah, well, I know you've mentioned how how um, how uh, the loss has really affected you. Yeah, it, it still does because, you know, uh, I, I, he was born on the 4th of August in 1987, the day before my birthday. So, oh. so we... Uh, I missed him because he was a great a great young fella. He if you needed you needed a ride, you know, like to work or something like that, he'd give it to you. Or if you had to go to the grocery store and didn't have a way, he'd go and do it. But he was well liked though. Well, thank you for sharing some of your memories and also glad you were able to have a good time up at Dorchester Park. Yep. We have a good day. Thank you. 9.33 at WNBF with more calls on this Tuesday morning. Hi, you're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Morning, you're on the air. Where are you calling from? Hey. Good morning, Bob. It's DJ from Binghamton. How you doing? Great. Yeah, we missed you, man. Did hey, you? What, was I missed? Did Did people miss me? You were so highly missed, Bob Joseph that the Binghamton listeners were calling me up and asking me what radio station to listen to. And I said, no, <laughs> wait, wait for them to come back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, the one thing I know is, as um, I've, I've mentioned this to so many people just in the past week, even though I wasn't thinking all the time about the talk program and about reporting news, I, I did mention to several people just how, how loyal WNBF listeners really are. Yeah, they are because it's a good show. Yeah, it's well. We got 18 days left of summer. I'm, you know, my air conditioners are out of the windows. But um, you mentioned Beach Bash. I went to that. That was really good. Uh, Amanda Florence has that up from Broom, the Broom County. She works for the Broom County. Does a great job. That was great. Uh, I wasn't there for the Rick Ross shooting, but I was in Syracuse. At the New York State Fair, that was wonderful. Gets better every year. I won't talk about the butter sculpture because I know you don't want to. Um, where else? Uh, oh, Elvis was oh, scheduled one hour and forty-five minutes later than usual. He flies in from Syracuse the impersonator. So, um, the Labor Day ball flat. You ever go to Green Bob for the ball flats? No, Day, I've uh, I've never been to that event. I like green. I've just never been to the event. They used to have a powwow. That was the first revival I ever did, Living Word Christian Center at uh, uh, 89. They used to have a powwow, um, but they don't have it anymore. But an Elvis impersonator comes. He's funny. He's a riot. He's got the fake sideburns. He's older. What else? Uh, B-Mets. They're happening. They're changing your name to the Binghamton Mets for three days. Did you hear about that? Well, I knew they were going to. So it, it, when does that start? Tomorrow? Or, um, or is it this weekend? It's coming up. It's, uh, yeah, I knew, that, I knew it was going to happen uh, toward the yeah. end of the season. I just couldn't remember. Now that we're getting close to the end of the season, I guess now if, they, if they're going to do it, now would be about the right time to do it or else, or else they're going to have to wait till next year. So, well, that'll be fun. Then I'll go to a game. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, one of the, I, I have very few regrets about this summer, but one of the regrets, it's not a huge regret, but the truth is I just haven't made it to as many baseball games as as I um, had expected. But I'll, looks like the weather is going to be pretty good this week. Yeah, it's getting back up to the mid-70s. So um, I always look for you and I look for uh, Carol. Um, yeah, oh, well, the, uh, the problem, the last couple of games that I attended, I I didn't find her in her usual place, so I don't know. I think, I think she knew that I was going to go to the games, and so she boycotted those games. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But I, I, I usually, you know, typically, 
um, at least at some point during the game, uh, look at, at certain, we'll say, standard places where certain people usually are seated just to see if they're there. And sometimes I, I spot them and sometimes I don't. But I, I always like seeing our, our listeners at the ball games. She wasn't at St. Mary's either, the bazaar. Uh, they sold that recreation center. She's usually there. She volunteers there. Huh. But Morgan, my friend who listened one time, or who called in one time, he was there. Hey, I was here on WNBF. Uh, what else has been going on lately? What's been the big the state fair? I don't know. I'm happy for fall, man. It's, you know... The allergic rhinitis is down. And, uh, you know what I hope they do next year at the fair? I hope they do a margarine okay. sculpture. <laughs> I'll cover one. that. If they do a margarine sculpture, I'll, I, I'm going to ask the guy who runs the state fair if they'll do a margarine sculpture next year instead of the sculpture they usually have. And I'll, I'll be the master of ceremonies for that when they unveil the margarine sculpture. That's a good idea. The I can't believe it's not butter. Sculpture. Yes, yes, and then they can get uh, Johnny Chestnut to uh, at the end of the fair to eat the whole thing because it'll be like oh, eight hundred pounds of uh, I can't believe it's uh, not butter, and we can get Johnny Chestnut to eat the whole thing, and he could probably eat it in about three and a half minutes because he boy, is oh boy, so man. talented. He's something else. I always man. think Lord. every every time I see him in the news, I always think his doctor must really be proud. Yeah, I think about his lower intestines. Oh. He must be speaking in five oh. different languages. I mean, just Funny. it's enough. I mean, I think about it, but still, it's enough to make you sick. Joey Which is Chestnut, that's his name? Jimmy Joey Chestnut. Chestnut. Jimmy Chestnut. Oh, uh, Joey, okay. Joey, Chestnut. Joey was the, the evil twin. Jimmy is the one that they call him Saint Jimmy. And Joey There's was the bad. Joey was the bad guy who, who always got in trouble down at, at Coney Island, but Jimmy, Saint Jimmy, was the good guy. He's he's the one. If if you want to have someone serve as an example with how you should conduct yourself in public, Jimmy Chestnut is the one to follow. Is Joey the car guy, the racer, or something? That I cars? Joey. I don't know. I don't know the whole story. It's it's quite the story, though. I thought he was going to be uh, running for mayor of New York City at one point, and then they had. Um, he had a falling out. Joey Chestnut had a falling out with the people that sponsor the uh, the food contest on the Fourth of July. So it's always it's always sad. It's always sad when when people who've been together that long, Joey Chestnut and the people who sponsored the eating contest, had some sort of dispute. What did he do? He promoted something else. Yeah, he promoted plant based hot dogs. Oh. <laughs> and and the people the people who sell real hot dogs with real filler they were unamused. I mean, here they are. They've invested their good name and promotion in I, I don't know for how many years, for several years, they've invested in promoting Joey Chestnut and look how many of these things he can eat and before you know it, he turns around and does a deal with a company that's selling plant-based hot dogs and to be blunt, the people at the at Coney Island were unamused. He went green. Yeah, he went green. I think he was. I think they they had a, a picture of him eating uh, one of those plant based hot dogs with AOC, and they they thought we don't want politics involved. This is not a political event. Oh man, isn't it? You know, and then the squad, the squad started advertising them, and then, well, you know, you know what happened then. Oh, yeah, I can imagine Ilhan Mohan eating a hot dog. <laughs> anyway, Ooh, good, no, good, no, good, no, no. good to talk with yeah, you. Yeah, welcome back, Bob. Hey, thank good you. you. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's 942. This is Bob Joseph at the controls. If you'd like to call, I'd like to talk with you, 607 772 1290. No, we're not going to talk about the butter sculpture. We'll talk about the margarine sculpture coming to the state fair in 2025. Boy, that'll that'll certainly get the attention of Kathy Hochul. 92.1 FM, 1290 AM, always available on the beautiful WNBF app. It is the best.
The truth is, Binghamton Now is the best radio program you're going to hear today. 607-772-1290. And welcome to my world. Rumble ponies are off today. So if you want to enjoy pure baseball action, be sure to tune in to your Rumble Pony station tomorrow for complete coverage of the Rumble Ponies live, live from uh, the stadium. Yipes, I'm looking at the schedule. There are only five home games left in the regular season. Well, no, actually six. There are two games scheduled for tomorrow. So the first game tomorrow, coverage begins at 345 here on WNBF with Jacob Wilkins. And then they also have another game. So apparently two seven-inning games tomorrow. Again, coverage will begin tomorrow afternoon at 345 on Thirsty Wednesday. Oh, no, it's not Thirsty Wednesday. We Care Wednesday. Of course, We Care Wednesday. As the Rumble Ponies begin their series against the Somerset Patriots. So enjoy. It's 946 at WNBF and WNBF.com. I have been to zero fairs this summer. I didn't go to the state fair. I haven't been to any county fairs. I did not go to the Binghamton City Fair. I must miss the Vestal Fair. Another fair I missed was in Troy. I'm looking at the coverage of the Troy Fair from the Tawanda newspaper. They have a pig auction. Troy Fair pig auction. Sees act of kindness benefiting a young boy. And it says Porky the pig was raised by Geyer Romberger. By the way, stop by participating locations for uh, two Rombergers for $10. Now, Geyer Romberger, that's the man's name, he raised Porky the Pig for three months to showcase at the Troy Fair. And listen to this. Things took a sudden turn when the hog started acting erratic. That's what it says, acting erratic, maybe erratically. Seizure like movements, standing on its hind feet and squealing were some of the behaviors observed with Porky the pig. Geyer's mother, Amy, said it was a little bit of disbelief because we hadn't seen the pig act like that. Nearby families learned what was going on and stated they never had seen anything like it. So the pig, Porky the pig, was acting erratically at the Troy Fair. Family members stayed with Porky in a barn overnight and saw no symptoms. The pig started acting erratically again after they left the next day. Amy's husband suspected separation anxiety from its litter mate, but the behavior is still a mystery. A veterinarian was called and could, could not figure it out. Around 40 minutes after the vet left, the pig... pig acted erratic again. Again, uh, the writer here says the pig was acting erratic, not erratically. They said it was puzzling, but they left it to the fair board to make a decision. Based on its guidelines, the board decided that Porky the pig should be pulled from the fair and sent to slaughter. So because he was acting erratically, they sentenced him to death. Amy stated that the fair board knew it wasn't an easy decision to make, but needed to be done for public safety reasons. The guy who raised Porky the pig, Geyer, said he was upset and sad to hear the news and had one last moment with Porky. Geyer was in a pen 
with the pig hugging it and quietly sobbing. His mom recalled she told her son that he could still be an active part of the fair by helping others with their animals. Families quickly learned of Geyer's situation and offered to give him their pigs to show. However, fair guidelines required the child's name on veterinarian paperwork of the pig be shown. So anyway, it's a long story, but it's it's heartwarming because somebody actually gave Geyer uh, a pig after Porky the pig was disqualified. So, hmm. See, that's the type of thing. That, that's what makes America great. If you want to know what makes America great, when somebody at the Troy Fair sees a situation like this where a, a young person is heartbroken because his the hog he raised had to be disqualified from the, uh, the fair competition. And, and here's a picture. Here's a picture on the front page of the Tawanda newspaper. It shows uh, a, a woman hugging the boy during the pig auction at the Troy Fair. And that's the type of thing that makes America great. It's a story of kindness. Then on the inside, there are additional stories about, or additional pictures about the uh, 11-year-old boy who was heartbroken when Porky the pig wound up being disqualified. See, that's the type of story you don't hear from the liberal media. Liberal media, even uh, Steve Hartman from CBS Action News, wouldn't even do a story like that because it's too heartwarming. It sh it's a slice of Americana. It shows you what real Americans are like. Real Americans see a situation, in this case, an 11-year-old boy who is heartbroken because the pig he raised to be in the competition at the fair was disqualified so he he was inconsolable at one point and then somebody a 19 year old man um gave Geyer the 11 year old boy the the pig so the pig could be in the competition one person who saw what was going on one bidder on the scene was Heidi Nicholas of Empire Livestock. She was touched by the boy's story. She said, most people say I have too big of a heart. That was something that was very dear to me. A pig often goes for $3 to $5 per pound. The pig eventually went for $19. Nicholas won the final bid with $4,400. And the uh, proceeds were split between uh, the boy and, and the guy who donated the pig to him. So don't say nothing good ever happens. It's right there in the newspaper, and you can see it. It's on the front page of the Tawanda paper. See, that's the type of story that should be on CBS Action News with Steve Hartman. He should go to Troy and talk to the boy about what happened and then talk to the other people at the fair. That's the type of story that makes you feel good. Instead of all the mean-spirited stuff that fills the media today. That's, that's a story that was written by Philip O'Dell, senior staff writer. That should be a national story. It's 9.53 at News Radio WNBF with Bob Joseph. Let's see what else is going on. I'm going to check WNBF.com. It seems like a good place to check out some stories, see what the uh, people at WNBF.com are up to. Oh, a free backpack giveaway at Broome County Sheriff event. So that's coming up later today from 5 to 6.30 p.m. on Conklin Road. If you want to learn about that backpack giveaway, check out Don Morgan's story on the website it says it's free I guess that means no charge to you also independent contractor arrangements changing in New York State uh, Governor Hochul has an initiative 
about sap producing. See, this is the type of story that I miss when I'm on vacation. I had no idea because I wasn't paying attention to all the breaking state news. I had no idea that there was a new initiative regarding sap production. So it says, according to a story by Don Morgan, they now have some kind of initiative regarding uh, sap production. And I, this, is, this is close to my heart because I almost bought a quart of maple syrup the other day. And here we go. It says, Kathy Hochul announced legislation to expand resources and protection for New York's agriculture industry, including tapping trees and sap production. So I apologize. I missed this entirely while I was away. It says the governor signed legislation to allow the leasing of New York state land to be used for sap production and tree tapping for 10 years to increase the return on investment for producers, including maple producers. Assemblywoman Donna Lopardo said thanks to the governor for taking an opportunity to sign these important agricultural measures. And she said supporting New York's beginning farmers along with helping our maple and apple producers thrive is part of our commitment to all things New York agriculture. So oh, I guess that includes people that are growing cannabis now. There's no mention of that. I hear, I keep hearing that they're planning to grow some cannabis in Binghamton. Uh, I mean, I can't give you details, but... You know, up until whatever, a year or so ago, it was illegal to grow cannabis in Binghamton. Now New York State is on the verge of allowing some people to start growing weed in the city of Binghamton. I never thought I would see the day. You know, I've, I've mentioned this before. Kathy Hochul now, when she's in Binghamton, and we've talked about this, when she, the last time Kathy Hochul was on Court Street, she made a decision not to come here to answer your questions on the radio while this program was on. She was here instead of going to our studio and saying, Bob, please let me answer some questions from your valued listeners. Instead, she went to the cannabis hut half a block away for a photo op to encourage people to buy and smoke weed. So that shows you her priorities. She doesn't want to answer your questions. Of course not, because some of the questions might be unsettling. Instead, she posed for pictures with the owner of the cannabis hut. So that shows you how far New York State has come. I didn't think New York State would get to this point until at least 2050. So we're, we're moving ahead of schedule. So we'll see. Uh, I'll let you know when, when they finalize that deal to start growing cannabis in the city of Binghamton. I'll let you know. So you can go and, and show your kids where, where the, sta <laughs> the state has authorized people to start growing marijuana. When I was a kid, if you did that, you'd probably wind up being charged with a felony. But times have changed. What next? Coming up, we'll have uh, news, ABC, with a national and world update. Then a local and regional report with Don Morgan. Then we'll take more phone calls. We're here for you on a Tuesday morning. The program's called Bingham to Now. I'm Bob Joseph, live on 92.1 FM, 1290 AM, streaming at WNBF.com. Joining us now in the studio is Les Smith from the Susquenango Power Squadron with information about a boating safety course that will be getting underway next week. Les, welcome back to WNBF. Well, thanks again for having me, Bob. It's really nice to be here. Well, tell us a little bit about the Susquenango Power Squadron for people not familiar with the organization. A little uh, background about its mission and about the, uh, the people who participate in some of the, uh, the programs that are put on by the, the organization. Sure. Uh, we used to be called the United States Power Squadrons, but now we've changed the name to America's Boating Club. And the Susquenango Squadron is just one group in that, in that bigger organization. It is a national organization, and we were called United States Power 
squadrons, but that got, uh, confused a lot of people. They seemed to think that since I said United States, it was a government agency, and it was not. Uh, then if you think about USPS, the first thing you probably thought about was the post office. And we're not that either. So, yes, nothing to do with mail carriers, nothing to do with the Marines, and nothing to do with the U.S. Navy. It is a completely separate private organization. <laughs> yes to all. <laughs> yep. And uh, America's Boating Club is more like who we are, better describes who we are. And we do two things with the public. And the first thing is... Uh, uh, boat inspections. And what will happen there is you'll get your vessel ready to go in the water. Maybe it already is in the water, but somewhere we'll meet you and we'll go over an inspection. Uh, there's a whole list of things that we look for, uh, mostly safety requirements. And if you pass, uh, we'll give you a sticker you can put on the window. If you fail, we will tell you what failed and what to do to fix it. And it's an also a very good time for the boat owner to talk to somebody who uh, if they have any questions or anything like that. And believe me, the guys that do this want to talk to you about it. It's free, and we're not going to try to tell, sell you anything. We have nothing to sell. So it's not like some sort of scheme or scam where, where well, just set, give us your information, your email address and cell phone number, and then we're going to start calling you and texting you three or four times a day with, with something special. It's not one of those deals. Right, right. They just come over. It'll take about a half an hour, depending on how much you talk to the guy. And uh, it's usually a, a good time for everyone. Are first-time boat owners sometimes confused about, or I won't say confused, but just uh, lacking in, in basic knowledge? Do, some t do people <laughs> who perhaps say, I've always wanted to own a boat, and now mm -hmm. I, I have found uh, just the right boat and just the right deal, and now I'm the proud owner of the... SS Binghamton now or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. but, but do you find that sometimes when people have purchased a boat for the first time that they haven't done much homework? Yes, almost every time, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Uh, their first boat is usually it's a huge, huge learning experience. Uh, how to drive it, uh, all kinds of things like that. Uh, how to park it, how to, how to, to launch it, uh, questions about what to do on the boat, uh, safety requirements. How does the engine work? I mean, all kinds of things. Well, it seems that, indeed, if unless you've grown up with a family or friends who are very knowledgeable, if you just haven't been part of the boating culture, I could see where it's like, huh, ah, there's a nice boat. I'm going to get it and have them deliver it. I, I have a dock, and, mm -hmm. and they'll deliver it. And all I need to do now is fuel it up and go out and have fun this weekend. That's <laughs> uh, not exactly how it works. Oh, if only that were true. <laughs> you'll, you'll see if you spend much of any time on the water, you're going to see a lot of people out there that shouldn't be on the water. They have no idea about the rules. They have no idea about the voyage. They have no idea who has right away. They have no idea about any of that stuff, and they make a lot of a silly mistakes. And sometimes a lot of dangerous mistakes. A lot of dangerous mistakes, uh, especially with drinking. Uh, it used to be, years ago, it used to be, you go out on the boat, you have a bunch of beers, everybody gets hammered, and everybody has a good time, and hopefully you won't get into an accident. Uh, but there's been a lot of very serious accidents where people have died and injuries, all kinds of things like that. But now, like driving your car even, uh, it's taken much more seriously. You can have boating while intoxicated now instead of driving while intoxicated. And it's the same alcohol level for a boat that it is in the car. And as I was talking about just in the last segment, alluding to changes in New York state law, now mm -hmm. that adult use of, of marijuana is permitted in New York State. I imagine that's also something you have to mention during your boating safety courses that, yes, there are rules that apply to alcohol use, but there are also things people need to know, even if they're legally, as adults, using marijuana. I'm guessing um, smoking marijuana right before going out on, on your boat is not something that is, is permissible or right. appropriate. That's absolutely right. Uh, if you're uh, influenced by any kind of drug, beat alcohol, pot, or anything else. Or even a prescription medication. Even a prescription medicine. Yeah. Anything that hinders your ability to react and, and think logically, um, that's just bad. 
So, so let's talk about the courses, and, and you've been an instructor now for several years, so I imagine over the course of the years that you probably have helped provide very important information to many, many local boaters of all ages. Tell us about how the course runs. The, the next course that you'll be uh, serving as the, the instructor will begin next Monday night at Johnson City High School. Tell me about how those sessions will run over the course of five successive Monday nights. Okay, the course is, runs two hours a night. Uh, from seven to nine at the at, like you said at the JC High School uh, for five weeks. Four of them are classes. The fifth one is the final exam. And when you pass the final exam, you'll get a certificate and a wallet card that you can use uh, to show uh, whoever you have to. You can also, because we're in New York, you can take the certificate to the motor vehicle department, and they'll put a little it looks like a little icon on your driver's license, a little anchor to show that, uh, that you have it. Uh, part of the reason that they want to do that is because a lot of people have lost their certificates or destroyed them. There's all kinds of things that can happen to them. But odds are, your license is going to last you. Yeah, almost everybody's very protective of their driver's license. Exactly. You know, if, if something happens to that, then then you'll get it replaced. But, yeah, it's it's certainly much easier to keep track of that than a certificate. It is. It is. And the class is good forever. Uh, you need to have the certification. Um, as we can talk about Brianna's Law, I think, because that's where a lot of this is coming from. Yes. And so Brianna's Law is, is something, and I know on occasion we've talked about it on this program, but mm -hmm. aside from, I think, the conversations that I've had with you about the, the boating safety course, I, I don't think we really have spent much time talking about the law. But, but mm -hmm. tell our listeners what Brianna's Law is and, and what it means for, for boaters in New York State. Okay, what it is, is Brianna's Law started because of a, a boating accident down in Long Island Sound. This gir young girl named Brianna was killed in a, in a boating accident. Well, after that, her parents decided to really push for um, registration and certification for, for, the, for the classes. So they didn't want that to happen to anyone else's kid. So Brianna's Law was passed back in 2020. And back then, if you were born after the January 1st of 93, you needed to have a certificate. At this moment, if you were born after... Um, the January 1st of 1978, you need to have uh, a certificate to operate any power boat, regardless of size and power, in any New York State waters. If you've got a big cabin cruiser with multiple engines or you've got a little uh, trolling motor on a canoe or on a little rowboat, you've got to have it. But starting next year, January 1st, it is mandatory for everyone, regardless of experience, to have the certificate in order to operate any power boat in New York State, which personally I think is a good idea. Yeah, I think that's a, a great idea. I, I didn't remember that there had been just a specific, mm -hmm. initially a specific um, age requirement, and so that makes sense that anybody who's going to be out there on the waters in New York State yeah. have have this. I mean, it's, it seems so basic, and yet, yeah, it's to me it's surprising. Eh, maybe it shouldn't surprise me that... Then at least initially there was just the age requirement, but I'm glad that that's being changed. Me too, because uh, you have a lot of people, I think like what we were talking about earlier, that they go out and buy a boat. Now I'm a boater. I can go out and do anything I want to. Yeah. Well, you know, and I, I don't want to get too far off topic, but I, I see some of the same things happen, or at least news stories where people finally get enough money. Oh, I can afford a plane or something, and, and so they become pilots, and yet they don't have the requisite experience to actually fly. Yeah. I can afford this aircraft, but I haven't learned how to fly it, and I don't have anywhere near the experience. And, mm -hmm. and we've seen tragic stories about that. I mean, the, yeah. the bottom line, whether it's a car or a boat or an aircraft, Mm -hmm. You got to learn. I mean, look, we all had to learn how to drive a car. Yeah. You know, our parents didn't say, oh, Bob, here are the keys. Good luck. You know, <laughs> congratulations. You now are a motorist. I mean, fortunately yeah. for me, you know, in, in Endicott, we had driver's ed and thank goodness. And we also had, most of us were fortunate to have parents who cared and would go out driving with us. I mean, you need, mm -hmm. no matter what you're going to be using, you need 
to learn from someone with some experience, some basically the ropes. Yeah, that's right. I did. My father taught me, and it was. I don't, it's turned out very well. Tell us about some of the uh, specific things that will be uh, uh, touched on in, in the class. Of course, obviously, the safety requirements and, yeah. and navigation rules and so on. But there's more to it than that. A lot more. Uh, actually, you're right. Safety requirements, uh, the navigation rules. For example, who has the right of, bay, right of way when two boats are crossing? Uh, navigation aids. What do all those buoys mean? What do they mean? Why do we care? Um, lights, you know, every vessel is supposed to have lights. Where do they go? What color are they? Where, and uh, what do they mean? Then we get into government regulations, both federal and state. Uh, then communications, uh, that's a, uh, the marine radio. And we really recommend that you all have one. Uh, there's, it's a lot of good. Uh, cell phones are a wonderful thing now, but if you're trying to call for help and the boat that you're trying to call is a few hundred feet over there, they aren't going to know it. They aren't going to be able to have your number. Uh, water sports. Uh, all the different other things that people go out for, like uh, jet skis is the, big, the biggest one. Hunting and fishing, all the things like that, that um, people go out for. What, what should you be looking for? What should you be careful of? Another big one is trailering. Uh, a lot of times when you buy a boat, that's the first time you ever pull a trailer, tow a trailer. And it's different than just driving a car. I mean, yes, there are some similarities, but there's a lot of things you need to know when you're going to operate a trailer. And then lastly, it's marlin spike. And marlin spike is essentially knot tying. Okay, And there's a handful of knots that you're going to use all the time on a boat. So we go over those. You'll get a chance to actually tie them and... Uh, that will take care of that. And that's most of what's in the class. So are these classes designed only for adults or can teenagers uh, uh, participate in the upcoming boating safety course? They can. Uh, the minimum age is 10. And I've had a 10-year-old in the class. And surprisingly, it surprised me, he did very well. He was one of my best students, actually. He was so interested. He got right in there, asked questions. And it was a real pleasure working with him. But yeah, I've had, we've had people from 10 up to in their 80s. So the classes will be held on Monday nights from 7 to 9 at Johnson City High School. The first class will be next Monday. Now, if people want to register, I know they can register online or they also would be able to register by calling you. Which, uh, I, I suppose for simplicity's sake, you, you might encourage people to register online if they're able to. Mm-hmm. I was surprised at how many people don't have a computer. Well, and a lot of people who listen to this show actually don't have computers. So, and this is a heads up for, for people who might be interested in the course in a moment. I'll have you give your phone number so people can be ready to jot it down if they want to uh, get in touch with you to, to register for the courses. But first, tell us about the, um, the website where if people want to register online where they can do that. Okay, the, the website is www.susquenango.org. And it's S-U-S-Q-U-E-N-A-N-G-O dot org. All right. And your phone number? My phone number is area code 607-797-7391. And if you have to, just leave a message and I will call you back. You also have an email address, so if people have uh, a pen or a pencil handy, I'll uh, have you give your email address if people want to uh, just shoot an email. Maybe they have some questions or thoughts uh, of things we didn't cover in our conversation. What's your email sure. address? Uh, lsmith84 at stny.rr.com. All right. And again, your phone number? Area code 607-797-7391. And the website, which has um, the option to register for this course and a lot of other information about the organization, that is Susquenango.org. Yes. All right. How many people do you think are going to sign up? About a dozen or so? Yeah, that's what we're thinking. Uh, usually the class in the fall is a little bit lighter um, as far as... Uh, uh, yeah, employ yeah. Students go in the spring. Usually, we'll have anywhere between like twenty and forty. 
Well, I wish you well. Thanks for coming in to talk about this topic. Some people might say, wow, that's weird. You know, you're you're talking about uh, boating safety, and, and here it's boating season here in New York and Pennsylvania is almost wrapping up. It but is. bottom line is, never hurts to be prepared for next season. That's right. And one of the things, too, is uh, since that Brianna's Law is, in fact, a law in New York, uh, there could be a $250 fine for each... Uh, uh, violation. And the other thing is, uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of people around here, and I've heard some people say that, well, the cops are going to be le- are going to be kind of lenient because it's new and everything like that, but it really isn't. It's been five years. And I've also heard that they're sitting at the launch ramps to check everybody as they launch their boat. And to be honest, I think that's closer to what it's going to be because it's a pretty good moneymaker for the towns and whatnot. Well, and, you know, it's sad that it that it requires um, a specific law enforcement effort, especially when a law changes. But it's true when traffic laws change. Mm-hmm. With you know, I'm old enough to remember when they started mandating seatbelt use. And I remember took, that. Took yeah. a while. Now, fortunately, when I learned how to drive, that was the first thing in mm-hmm. driver's ed: buckle your seatbelt. Mm-hmm. first, then turn on the car. And so I, I got into that habit right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. But other other laws, too, as far as uh, cell phone use and things like that, sometimes uh, we'll just say it takes a little financial incentive to, to help people learn when, yeah. when the law changes. And that's going to be true. And I, I expect over the next several months we'll hear about this change as it applies with Brianna's law, as mm-hmm. as it expands to cover all boaters. Yeah, and there's another small financial uh, aspect of it as well. Uh, if you take this class, uh, you take the certificate to your insurance carrier, okay? You, and I think most everybody's going to have insurance on their boat. It's similar to car insurance. But if you take the certificate to your insurance agent, usually you'll get about a 10% discount, which could be a lot of money. Well, these days, yeah. especially... When all forms of insurance, whether it's insurance for for uh, boating or for driving, insurance costs are constantly going up. So 10% actually is more meaningful today than it was just a few years ago. <laughs> That's so right. that, that makes sense. So sounds like it's uh, it'll be time well spent. I think so. Les Smith, thanks for joining us here at WNBF. Thanks so very much for having me, Bob. I appreciate the chance. Take care. It's 1029. This is Binghamton Now on WNBF. It's 1030 at WNBF Binghamton. A lovely forecast. Thank you to the National Weather Service for providing a fine forecast as we start the month of September. Sunny today, high 72. Clear tonight, low 48. Sunny tomorrow, 77 for a high. There will be some patchy fog tomorrow morning. And let's take a look at uh, the rest of the week. Sunny on Thursday, high 76. Mostly sunny Friday, high 77. Mostly cloudy on Saturday. Showers likely, high 72. And partly sunny on Sunday, high 68. Right now, it's 55 at News Radio WNBF. That's 13 Celsius. The air quality is good. Air quality index for Binghamton now is 29. It's good. Hi, WNBF. Good morning. You're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Yes, this is Carol from JC, and I thought you just said, okay, call, and I said, oh, heck, what the what, what the heck? I'll call as long as you were talking about boating and because I, I had one important comment to make, and I hope Mr. Smith is still listening. Sailboats always have the right of way. And now we can talk about baseball. Yes, let's. So what is the story about the Rumble Ponies? Well, there's a doubleheader Wednesday night. It's a makeup from... Uh, right. When and we so the first pitch is going to be at 4 tomorrow afternoon? Gates open at 3.30. Yeah. And WNBF <laughs> coverage starts at 3.45. Because <laughs> that's when you get out of work. Yeah. I'm going to get out of work and then I'm going to run. Not walk. I'm going to run over to the stadium, <laughs> and I'm going to throw out the first pitch. They may surprise you. One of these days, you just may do that. <laughs> yeah, they may surprise. They may surprise a lot of people. Well, that would be that'd be a great story tonight on Action News. Or no, Jim Emke. I would give Jim Emke 
the exclusive. Tonight on News 34, the exclusive team coverage, Bob Joseph at the stadium. Do they, do they have another person in place of uh, uh, Mr. Emke? Uh, I happened to get up fairly early, which yeah. is what I normally do, and they were doing a rerun of last night's news, and, uh, and, and uh, it was somebody who was now yeah. Jim Emke. They do. But he does need a day off, I mean. Well, yes, <laughs> we all, even I deserve a day off. Yes, Jim Emke of all people. He's the dean of Binghamton Broadcasting, so of course he deserves time off. If anybody yes, deserves, if anybody deserves time off for good behavior, it's Jim Emke. So, yeah, but he's. I hope he's working today. I I'll be. When I, when the program ends at noon, I have a couple places I have to go to cover stories because I have a couple of stories that I've been wanting to do, but I couldn't do last week because I was off. You know, uh, they, they, I have to ask a question. Yeah. Did any of your days off uh, include a baseball game, maybe? No. Okay, that's all I was wondering. Yeah, no, I should have, but... <laughs> I should well, have. I, I, was, I was just, just uh, a little while ago, I, I uh, was looking through some old notebooks, and uh, I found from 2000, and that was one of my favorite players that on, on the BMET, uh, Jared Riggin. And there's a, a gentleman who comes to the games every now and then, uh, wears number 34, which was his number. Uh, but he, he, he was the uh, primo reliever, uh, you know, the save guy. And I think his ERA was under two, one point something. But uh, anyway, gasoline back then in July of 2000 was, uh, oh, because we, my daughter and I went to Bowie, Bowie, Maryland. Anyway, gasoline back then was $1.49 a gallon. Oh, and then I I made a note because I keep like a shorthand notebook, uh, you know, recording my trips and my, mileage and MPG. Well, not the MPG, but up. Uh, and I made like a little star by this one place where I got gas for a dollar thirty nine. A dollar thirty nine. That's crazy talk. And, and July of two thousand. That's crazy. Two thousand. Well, that's the way it goes. Well, weren't we anyway. uh, in the middle of a recession? In July of 2000? Yeah, wasn't there was, some kind of recession? I don't oh, know. Oh, no, I know what it was. It was a presidential election year, so they always lower the gas prices a few months before the election, so that's what was going on. 2000. Well, like, now that wait, you think about it, 2000, that's when uh, uh, W, remember W, who marched here in the, the parade, the St. Patrick's Parade, in uh, March of 2000, so he... Uh, he probably got who was uh, who was the president there in two thousand. I don't know. It's it's too when many years. When was his ago. father? When was his father president? Oh, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's you know it's all history to yeah. me. But anyway, anyway, I'm I I'm just telling you again about going to Portland. I know you just came back from vacation, but yeah. I I don't I'm, I'm trying to figure out because I don't have the internet and uh, the friend that I'm going with doesn't either. So. Uh, I, I might just randomly call in some ridiculous time. You could uh, during the morning. Yeah, you're you're more than welcome to. I would. So when are you? So when will you leave? When are you planning to leave? Mon Tuesday or Monday? Monday the, no yeah. Mon Monday the ninth. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure how how the money, the money and the weather. I don't know. First, is, how's the weather? And now with this stuff. Uh, I mean, it was 57 uh, degrees at the game last night when uh, when it ended, 57, 55, somewhere around. Who sits on their front porch enjoying the weather if it's 55 degrees? Yeah, it did get, did get chilly last night, although yesterday yes. during the day was nice. So I'm going to have to call Howard Mangus and ask him what's the uh, forecast for uh, Portland, Maine for, for next week, some, some computer. Oh, well, he would know. He, 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 know he, yes. he, he knows all. Yes, and, and it makes me crazy because it's like it could be cold because it's usually cold, you know, colder up there. And But, you know, a CBS, when they run, uh, when they start their show, I think at, what, 7 in the morning or something? Yeah, with, uh, have, with Oprah's friend. <laughs> yes, and when they have a break, on the right side of the screen, they always run alphabetically all these uh, primary cities in the United States. Oh, I like well, that, but they never include I, Binghamton. Man, that irks me. Have you noticed? <laughs> they, they run all the, uh, they call it a crawl, and they go out of their way to include every city but Binghamton. Have you noticed that? 
Uh, yes, I did notice that. But they had Anchorage, Alaska. It was like 92 in Alaska and Portland, Maine. There must have been some sort of heat wave along the Canadian border or something because uh, it was colder in Florida. I mean, it was warmer in that part than it was in Florida when they were giving Florida uh, uh, temperatures. I thought things are really screwy. So uh, I don't know. I know I'm taking a winter coat. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't think it's going to... Well, yeah. We're, oh, no. Well, but bring, your, bring your gloves. You should bring your gloves just in case. I always have a pair of gloves in my duffel bag that right. I take to the game with all my radio batteries, binoculars, whatever. Did you hear that about like gas prices? Here's... Just to prove my point, gas prices have plunged. So gas I, prices oh. today are nearly 50 cents a gallon lower than they were in Binghamton a year ago. And, so, and what is it? Because I filled up my tank in Auburn when I went to the Maryground Playhouse right? uh, a week ago, and it, I got gasoline for three oh three a gallon. Three oh three. So what is it here? I haven't three, seen my favorite. Three forty seven. Oh yeah, no, on average. Across it's, from the spot, across from the spot restaurant, there's that place that's oh, yeah. next to the Sonic. I, oh that, oh that and, place. And it's that, not burned dairy. It's not. No, burned I know. Dairy. I know what I know. S S N K K yeah S N K Happy Gas or whatever. They always have the happiest and most affordable gas. Have you ever noticed how cheap their gas is? The last time I got it, there it was three twenty three. I bet it's even cheaper. I'm looking it up now. I'm going to look that it up. Was before, that was before I even spent 303 in Auburn uh, two weeks ago. What was it the last time you were there? Uh, probably three weeks ago. And how much was it then? 323. Yeah. According, well, according to uh, Gas Buddies, it's 323 today. Oh, which is what it was. Yeah. According to Gas okay. Buddy. I'm going to... I don't know. I, I might be up there. I might go get some gas up there. Three twenty-three, and I'm so happy because gas prices. You know how how high gas prices make me sad. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not the only one. Yeah. I do a lot of driving. But now look, so gas prices. Let's see. The average price now in New York State, as of today, according to Triple A, is three forty-seven, and. It keeps coming down. It, oh. that's, that's that's three cents cheaper than it was last week. I mean, it keeps that, coming down. Well, I, it just reminded me that I called a triple A last week. If they could tell me what gasoline was averaging in the uh, Maine area, you know, between Massachusetts and Maine, and they said about three forty, three point four, four zero nine. You know where you should go but to that, get. But that was uh, that was a week ago, so we don't know. Why don't now you go if you want some cheap gas? Why don't you go out to uh, around Elmira? Because the gas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's cheaper no, saying, in Shimung County. Unless I have a reason to go there. Well, unless I have a, re a reason to go. There. Uh, go out to Elmira and see if uh, who's that kid from NBC News? The guy who was t caught telling all the lies, Brian. Oh yeah. Williams, go out I, there yeah, and yes. see if Brian Williams is out there telling any new lies. <laughs> Did you ever go I into Elmira? They have a big sign, and it's got a picture of Brian Williams, who used to tell lies for NBC News, and then Tommy Hilfiger, and he, he made a lot of money because he designed a shirt. And who else? Oh, the astronaut. Yes, I was just going to say an astronaut. She, she is on the sign, and then there are a couple other hangers on. They needed, they thought... They thought. Where, where is this? At the where entrance to Elmira. Elmira. At the Elmira well, city I, limits, they have they I, have Tommy Hilfiger, the guy who uh, made a lot of money because he designed a shirt. Uh, Brian Williams, who made a lot of money because he used to be a respected anchor at NBC Nightly News, and then Eileen Collins, who uh, was in space travel. She did it when it was safe. Before they started. Um, farming it out to private contractors when it was still uh, a, a totally government-run program. So she well, was it, smart. You know, if you're going to be an astronaut, see, what we've got two astronauts who are stuck up there now, spinning around for what was supposed to be an eight-day mission. Now they're that stuck. That scares me. 
That's very scary. Well, scary. It, it, I, think I, about I got it. claustrophobic just thinking about it. I get claustrophobic in this studio, and I'm sure this studio <laughs> is bigger than the the crew cabin, and they're stuck there because of Boeing. I heard that. I feel very badly about that. Well, I think Boeing probably is going to face some litigation. If if you were one of these astronauts, and, and let's hope for the best, but let's hope for the best that eventually, because now they say the earliest they can come home is February. I, mean, I was just going to say February, right. So don't you think they have a case? I should call up Joe Stanley to see if the astronauts who are stranded <laughs> on, the, on the thing up there it was supposed to be an eight-day thing if joe stanley thinks that they have a legitimate case against boeing because if i i'll tell you what i'm as patriotic as the next person but if i went on a mission and it was supposed to be eight days and then they once i get up there they say oh yeah we were kidding you can't come back till at least february and even then we're not so sure the other thing is carol what are they eating up there Oh they, my God! They went up for oh an eight-day mission. Think of that movie. Do you remember that one movie? I can't remember the actor. Uh, no, I remember no. what I remember is those guys who got that, trapped in a coal mine, and it didn't end well. So my, I'm right. just, it doesn't. They didn't bring up. They didn't bring up eight months worth of food, did they? Nope. So what are they eating? <laughs> you know that was. I didn't even think of that. I That's the first thing I thought of. That. I mean, do they have cinnamon oh rolls? Do they have coffee? Do they have cider mill donuts? I mean, what? It... No free coffee at Burn Dairy on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, and again, you know, I'm not, I'm not an attorney, but I, if I were, I would call them when they came back and say, "Hi, I'm an attorney, and." Would you like to talk to me after you're reunited with your family for a few hours? Would you like to meet with me tomorrow morning here in my Binghamton office and we can talk about a legal strategy? Because honestly, I think I think they have a case. Well Don't who, you? Who will be the who will be yes, who will be the lucky lawyer to approach them first? Well hopefully <laughs> it's somebody I know. I'll recommend I'll 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 actually I'll um uh, you know how some lawyers they'll they'll give you, I don't know what they call it, a bonus. You know if if you uh, recommend somebody, I I'm I know a lawyer that I'll recommend that the astronauts see. She's a good oh. lawyer, and she she will take their case, and she won't charge them unless she won't charge them a penny unless she wins. That's always the case. That's yep. always the case. I know. Case. It's great. Oh, anyway, goodness. gee, I hope they don't lose any weight while they're up there. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt Damon. I just thought of the actor's name. Yeah. Matt, da Matt yeah. Damon. He well, that I got to tell you, there. after after they're finally back safe, safely here in the USA, they're going to make a movie about that. No doubt. Yeah. Anyway, thanks no for calling, doubt. Carol. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> Jeez. It's 1045. News Radio WNBF. Good morning. You're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm an attorney. Yeah, so do you think they have a case? I mean, they went up there with the understanding it was an eight-day mission. Now they're stuck up there. I can't believe they even have enough food. So my question is, do yeah, you no, think, we as, as an attorney, do you think they have a case? Uh, yeah, it's worth it would definitely be worth talking Two words, about. Matthew Ryan, Esquire. Two words, mental anguish. Yes. You can't put a price I, on yeah. mental anguish. You you submit that case to any jury in America, and they're going to award these two astronauts a trillion dollars each just for the mental anguish. Yeah. I mean, there's probably lawyers talking about what's going on, because think about it. If they're Now we have this mishmash of private and NASA and all that. Rockets. I mean, you imagine if they, you know, it's just if let's hope nothing tragic happens. No, let's, let's hope, hope they come back alive. No, and I yeah. here's here's the thing. Let me be perfectly clear. I support right. astronauts. These astronauts and the entire U.S. space program. I support NASA. I support Boeing. I support SpaceX. I support every aspect, the public and private sector 
of the space program in the United States. And all I wish, Matthew, is for the best. I wish the best for the astronauts. I wish the best for everybody with NASA who's working diligently on the program. I wish the best for the people at Boeing who are involved in this program. Imagine psychologically what this is having on them. I mean, whether it's the managers of the program or even just the rank and file, it's got to be difficult, the uncertainty of not knowing how this will end. And even, dare I say, the mental anguish that Elon Musk is facing in case one of his SpaceX things has to go up to rescue them. Even Elon Musk is probably suffering. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the thing. Elon Musk, there's been a whole bunch of those rockets and things that have failed. Yeah. And well, so I mean, I, you know, it's I, still, yeah. we've made a lot of progress over the decades, but it's still, there still is inherent risk as, as we're seeing with this mission. Anyway, what else is on your mind? Well, I, when you're talking about um, Brian Williams and, 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 and that whole thing and the price of gas, I think there's kind of a connection and what I, what I always, you know, Brian Williams, you know, told a couple stories, I guess, and it affected greatly his, uh, uh, his career. Joe Biden, uh, in 1988, I remember my father was supporting him when I was in law school and he was all big Joe Biden fan. He plagiarized a couple sentences out of some labor, British labor politicians thing in a speech. And his campaign was over. And, and, and now I'm, I'm pretty sure that somehow Donald Trump will uh, try to claim credit for the price of gas going down. Somehow. Oh, well, yeah. I, I think that's why gas has gone down 47 cents in Binghamton over the last year is because of him. <laughs> exactly. So he'll somehow try when we all know that the gas buddy would tell us something very different <laughs> that's um, true the gas buddy knows i'll tell you what and this is this is not a political statement matthew the gas buddy knows the score when it comes to gas and oil prices the gas buddy knows all and and you've okay. heard him say on more than one occasion has nothing to do with who's in charge of the country yeah the other thing that i just wanted to comment on is i i have been forcing myself to listen to the fox because I just wanted to see what, you know, I, I do like to see what they're saying. And they're trying to paint um, the vice president and Tim Waltz as liars. And it's, uh, and it's so, I mean, how can you, how can you do challenge anybody on being a liar about minute things when you're, when you enable the biggest fibber in the history of the world and of politics you don't challenge him on everything he says, uh, you know, because we all know he's changed his position in the last week on women's. He said, I'm going to be the greatest champion for women's reproductive rights. And then he says he's not going to vote for the Florida um, referendum. And then he's changed that because he told him, no, 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 you can't say that. And, and he just, and then he says that, you know, Democrats endorse killing babies after they're born and just to incite the whole, I mean, the guy's all over the place and he lies. That's yeah, a but, lie. but I want to point out, at least he's consistent. <laughs> well, well, I don't, right. And, and, and I, don't think, I don't think, I don't think there's been a national politician over the last decade who's been more consistent than he. Well, that's true, but if you like chaos and, you know, consistent chaos, I yes. guess that's your guy. We we love yeah. it. We love it. Hey, hey uh, appreciate your call. Hey, how about, how did you like Porch Fest? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> no, we, we'll discuss that another time. Yeah, I, I was going to say, wait, wait wanna, yes, because that's, about it. yes. I do want to, I didn't want, I'm not trying to elicit anything. No, I know. I, I, I was waiting, and, and of course it would be you who brought it up, but I was waiting for someone to bring it up. Yes, we'll talk about that tomorrow or Thursday. Well, yeah, I'd like to talk to you. I'm going to give you a call later. Yeah, give me a call later. <laughs> okay, because really, I, my whole goal is like yours is always, here's my goal. 
without, and probably most people listening don't have any idea what we're talking about. But my whole goal in this whole situation is make sure that what happened never happens again and that this great event is preserved. And, Absolutely. And, and that, that, that should be the whole goal. That's my goal, too. And I, so. do, I do want to talk to you because there's a lot of conversations going on behind the scenes. And, I, and, and you, you could blow this whole thing up. <laughs> and we, and we don't want you. No. And, and we, and no. We don't no, we there. don't want that. So give me a call. Okay. Bye. <laughs> or you call me. You got my Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's 1053. Bob Joseph. Mr. Fun on WNBF. 607-772-1290 is the number if you'd like to talk on the Binghamton Now program. We're here for you. We serve you. We're here because the community needs a live local radio program, and you have it, thanks to WNBF 92.1 FM, 1290 AM, streaming WNBF.com, and, of course, the free WNBF app. Enjoy. Embrace the technology. And, of course, we'll have some interesting stories to report for you on WNBF.com this afternoon. Yes, I've already been out talking with sources and taking pictures and video and asking just a few questions to get a few answers for you. So you'll see uh, some of the information on WNBF.com coming up in a few hours. I encourage you to check out the website on a regular basis. Here's a story. I haven't read the story. I just saw the headline, but it looks, based on the headline, it looks interesting. In the New York Times, left sows misinformation of its own. Several elected officials, along with a top political aide for the billionaire, Reid Hoffman, recently suggested without proof that former President Trump may have staged an attempt to assassinate him in July. Mark Hamill an actor, an advocate for democratic causes with more than 5 million followers on Twitter, criticized a conservative policy proposal by railing against ideas that were not part of the document. And just last month, Vice President Harris's campaign misleadingly suggested in some posts that Mr. Trump was confused about his whereabouts during a campaign stop. Her followers seized on the post claimed that Mr. Trump was suffering from cognitive decline. For years, the discussion about misinformation online is focused on falsehoods circulating on the right, but in recent weeks, a flurry of conspiracy theories and false narratives have also been swirling on the left. So, basically, it comes down to you can't trust anyone, it seems, online. Well... Yes, you can trust Binghamton Now online, on Twitter, at Binghamton Now. There's some trustworthy information on that Twitter feed, at Binghamton Now. Some misinformation researchers are worried that the new spate of left-leaning conspiracy theories could further polarize political discourse before the election. More than a third of President Biden supporters believe the assassination attempt may have been staged according to some sort of poll. See, that's the problem. People are gullible. And it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on. You cannot afford to be gullible. Don't be easily swayed by stuff you see on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Do your homework. Do your own research. Don't trust something just because you see it online. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. Do your homework. It's 1058. Bob Joseph, live on WNBF. 607-772-1290 is the number to participate. And we are always recruiting new participants. If you feel a need to talk on the radio or even just a burning desire, you may call us now. 607-772-1290 is our number. Over the weekend, there's a website dedicated to oldies or Top 40 radio, back when Top 40 AM radio was a big, big thing. 
maybe you remember those days. Top 40 radio, where uh, you'd have a person who would be spinning the hits, playing lots of songs that might run two minutes or two and a half minutes. So over the weekend, a website called Rewound Radio was not only playing some oldies, but they were running uh, featured segments from two really, really powerful Chicago radio stations. They were very, very important in the radio industry back in the late 60s and throughout much of the 70s. And one of the stations was called WCFL, one of the big stations in Chicago. And one of the most important people who was on that station, along eventually with the um, other top 40 station called WLS, he's a, a kid who grew up on Endicott's north side, Dick Biondi. And one of the air checks, that's one of the recordings they ran over the weekend from the station WCFL in Chicago included this little clip. It's not a great recording because I just recorded it off, um, I think, an iPad. So I'm just going to play this. It's a short clip when Dick Biondi, back in March 1969, made reference to growing up in Endicott. Remember, this is on a big station, a big 50,000-watt powerhouse station in Chicago. And little Richard Biondi was remarking about uh, what it was like to grow up on Endicott's north side. Uh, it was Dick Biondi on WCFL, March 27th, 1969. Uh, unfortunately, um, Dick Biondi is no longer with us. He uh, has died. But he was a big, big force in radio, especially in Chicago for decades. And Dick Biondi died a little over a year ago. He was 90 years old, but he did grow up on Endicott's north side. Looking at the story that I wrote in July of last year when he died, it said, as a kid, he was always interested in radio. He had a chance to read a commercial on a station in Auburn, and soon after that, Dick Biondi was working at WINR in Binghamton behind the scenes, helping the sports director. One of his co-workers at the time was Rod Serling, who later would make his mark as a TV producer and screenwriter. When Dick Biondi was 17, he was playing music during triplets baseball games at Johnson Field in Johnson City. His first on-air job was at a Corning radio station. He was a sportscaster. Then he worked at a few other stations in Pennsylvania and Ohio before he was hired by WKBW Radio in Buffalo. And when he was on KB Radio, he quickly gained a following as a disc jockey. That station could be heard in many states, especially at night, especially during the winter months. Although Dick Biondi was heard on several stations in many cities over his career, he had his biggest impact on radio in Chicago. He started at WLS in Chicago in 1960 and then later worked for a while at WCFL, then went back to WLS. They even named an intersection in Chicago in honor of Dick Biondi. So, anyway, it was interesting just to hear that, that little clip. The little clip uh, from that WCFL uh, program going back to 1969 when just so happened that Dick Biondi mentioned the hill on Endicott's north side. It's 1116 at WNBF. Weird thing is, as I grew up, I would say about six blocks east of where Dick Biondi grew up. Difference is, I think he was 
he was definitely older than me, so I never had a chance to run into him when he was on Endicott's North Side. Never, never um, spoke with him. Well, I might have spoken with him. He was back here in Binghamton for a broadcaster's reunion, I think about a decade ago. But I, I never did an interview with him about his radio career, so that was a lost opportunity. It's 1116. Good morning, WNBF. You're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Tom from Mendel. How are you doing today, Bob? Oh, good morning. Welcome back to the show. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to, the, the, the mayor wind up calling in and was, you know, really prompting up, you know, Kamala Harris. You know, I, if I, if I was, I mean, I'm an independent voter and I find it appalling that six months ago, liberal media, the Democrats, they wanted to get rid of Kamala because they strongly believed that her, she was bringing Joe Biden's poll numbers down. And then they then they go where Joe Biden drops out, which I called that. I said that that was going to happen, and I also said that they were going to slam Kamala in. Um, no primary, the voters didn't get to choose. That's dictatorship, right out of the gate. Well, that's and what that you is- had to do. It, I mean, it's just the way the circumstances went. The clock was ticking. You can't. The way the United States operates, you can't delay the election. Now, if it was a different country and they had to make a change, they could have delayed the elections by six months or 12 months and held a new round of primaries. And Democrats could have chosen a much better candidate to represent the party. But the clock was ticking. They, they didn't have a choice. First of all, they had plenty of time. Second of all, second of all. Now, like they were going to out her. She was the she's the worst president, vice president in history. No, and then no, Spiro T. Agnew. Spiro T. Agnew was the worst vice president in history. He was so bad he had to resign. Well, so you think you Harris. you tell me this? You you're telling me with a straight face that Spiro Agnew was somehow better than Kamala Harris? He had better pollings than Kamala. He had a what? He had better pollings than Kamala. And he was yeah, but he, he was a felon. Said. See, what, what galls me is how Republicans are standing up for felons. Spiro Agnew was a felon. He was involved Demi- in a scandal. His boss was involved in a scandal. Richard Milhouse Nixon was involved in a scandal so bad that he had to resign. And then oh. the the guy who is the Republican nominee, he's a felon. Not just once, not just twice, not just three times, 34 felonies. I mean, so you're telling me, you're telling me that a bunch of felons are somehow better than Kamala Harris, who's been convicted of nothing. And Joe Biden's not? They just won't go Joe after Biden them. hasn't they- been convicted of a, a, of a felon either. That's my point. The Democrats are running these candidates, felony-free candidates. Why can't they find a felon to run for president? Don't the Democrats have any good felons? They're Democrats who've been convicted of felonies. Come on. You going to let me talk now? Of course. It's your show. It's your call. It's your dime. Like I said, the Democrats are running the show. They let Hillary off. They let Joe Biden off. They're not gonna. They're not gonna go after the Democrats. You got Hunter Biden and Joe Biden highly involved in Ukraine, highly involved in China. That's already been proven. They, they, they have it. Joe Biden had documents that he took from the skip back when he was only in Congress. That's a felony. But the problem is they they're not they're not gonna go after the Democrats. But the moral of my story is Kamala Harris is started a GoFundMe to bail all these people out of jail from the riots. Um, you know, she, she slipped. The- what happened to your line? Your line just dropped out for three seconds. Probably because you dropped me out. You know, that's, that's, if, that's if you're going to say something like that, maybe I'll just have to suspend you. You know, I'm, I'm in a good mood today, so I'm going to let that go. 
I that's asked you what I'm happened to your line that. because you were talking. I was listening astutely, doing doing my best not to interrupt. So I didn't interrupt. I'm listening astutely. And then your phone drops out for about three seconds. And I have the moral decency to mention it to you. I could have just let that slip. And then you, Tom from Endwell, you have the nerve to say that I did that? I mean, you've been known to do it, Bob. But anyway, back to what I was Oh, I can't let that go unchallenged. I've been known to do it. No, I don't. I, no, I don't. I don't dump people out in the middle of a sentence if, if we're having a conversation and I interject. Say, if you said something outrageous and then I respond to it, then I interject. That's one thing. I don't. I don't take random callers and say, "Oh, he's making a point." Right in the middle of his point, I'm going to turn down the volume on his call for three seconds just to be cute and then mention it to him. You know, Bob, you know, you of all people, you've listened to the program for years. You know, so that shows how much you respect the host. That you think that I would dump out your uh, uh, thing that you were saying in mid sentence. Now it's one thing. Again, if I interject something, which is what people do in a conversation, we're just we're just people conversing. But to suggest on live radio in America that I would dump out your call for three and a half seconds and then have the temerity to say, oh, what happened to your phone? Come on, man. Or you just have, you, have you no respect? Or you just over-talk them. I already admitted that, that I do that. It's called interjecting. It's a conversation. It's the same thing. No, it's not. <laughs> You right, might you think it's the same here, thing, gonna... but but in the middle, in the middle of a statement where I was listening intently, trying to follow your logic, and then your phone drops out, and it cascade me, the host, the facilitator, the person who worked so hard to make this program a success. Yeah. Are you going to let me finish? Because I know my time's probably running up. Can no, I my your time? you got all the time in the world. Take all the time you want. I just, you know... I, I just expected that, or I, for some reason, I was under the impression that you had a little more respect for me to know that I wouldn't intentionally drop the volume on your call. So I called it to your attention. I thought I was doing you a favor to offer you a chance to repeat. So here you go, because, again, against my better judgment, since you showed a lack of respect for me by suggesting that I turn down the volume on your call for three and a half seconds. So against my better judgment, I'm going to allow you 60 uninterrupted seconds to make your point. Like I said, now they're up and they're making her look great. The, her VP pick, he let his city burn. He denied the National Guard to come in. The guy's a crook. And and everybody's making him sound like he's the greatest. You go into his city and start talking to the people, which there's news people that have gone out there, um, people that do, uh, you know, web pages that are out there talking to the people. They'll tell you what he's done. They'll tell you that he's a scumbag. He destroyed his city. And 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 I just I just find it absolutely hilarious. Five months ago, they wanted to dump her. And now all of a sudden they're making her like the best thing ever. They just slam her in. There you go, Democrats. That's your pick. Deal with it. If this pans out, this is going to be the way that Democrats run their business. And they, they'll do it again. They'll continuously keep doing it. But we'll, we'll, we'll just call Republicans lies. We'll call Republicans uh, criminals. But. You know, they don't go after the Democrats. And, you know, isn't it funny that CNN always shows up first before they arrest a, a conservative? Weird how that works. Anyway, Bob, you have a great day, and uh, we'll continue to watch this sham. Thank you for calling. WNBF Live with Bob Joseph. Good morning. You're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Skip from Lyle. Hi, Skip. What's up? Hey, uh, in the first place, if that guy's not a Democrat, what's he worried about who we're running for on the Democratic Party? Actually, that's an excellent point. It didn't even occur to me. Why does he even give up, excuse the expression, darn, 
why would he care? You would think he would be all the happier because the person who he described, I mean, what first repeatedly, and I allowed it this time, but I'm getting um, a little tired of people calling in and mispronouncing the candidate's first name, but I, I, as a courtesy to him, he did it repeatedly, and you know he did it intentionally, but it's right. we're not going to stand for that anymore. And so I'm putting people on notice, if you're going to mention the Democratic candidate's first name, pronounce it right, or your call might be terminated. So, so there's that. So I gave him the courtesy of mispronouncing her name multiple times, and then denigrating her. You would think if, if all things being equal, if he supports the Republican candidate, he should be happy. What What's his big gripe? He should say, oh, you've given us the worst vice president of the history. And again, I'm old enough to remember Spiro Agnew. Now, Spiro yeah. Agnew was no ball of fire. He was a former governor of Maryland, and he resigned in disgrace because of shenanigans that were involved when he was governor of Maryland. Now, I do want to point out, in the interest of accuracy, Spiro Agnew, after maintaining months of innocence, he did plead no contest to a single felony charge of tax evasion. So, and then he resigned from office. Who could forget that dismal day in um, whatever, 1973, when, when he resigned after pleading no contest to a single felony charge of tax evasion. So I will give you, uh, we'll give Spiro Agnew fans credit. He only was essentially guilty of one felony versus this year's Republican presidential candidate who's been right. convicted of 34 felonies. So it's true. When it comes to felonious behavior, uh, certainly Spiro Agnew was, was only a beginner compared to the man from Queens. Now continue. And he thinks that the vice president is worse than the man from Queens? Oh, come on. I mean, come on, man. That's what I almost said. I almost said when he was excoriating her, I almost said, come on, man. But I showed some respect by not saying, come on, yes, man. Yes, you did. And I don't know how you did it, but you did great at that. Yes. <laughs> and then I did I did a nice thing. What, I, what came across to me is perhaps the nicest thing a host could do and mention that his phone dropped out for three and a half seconds. And then he goes on the air on live radio in front of potentially billions of listeners, suggesting right. that I did it on purpose? For what? Mm -hmm. No, you know the way I operate this show. I don't just, in the middle of some sentence when someone's trying to make a point, decide, oh, this will sound good on the radio by, by pressing the... Um, the, the volume level down to zero for three and a half seconds, that'll make for great radio. Hey, if I, if I want, and I, as I sometimes do, even with you, I will interject. That's just how I am. That's how I'm wired. doesn't make me a bad person. And when you shut him off, you knew exactly what he was going to say before he said it, so you knew when to shut him off. Jeez. I know. And then I gave him a full minute of uninterrupted commentary, and then it's, yeah. you know, I don't understand. Here's what I don't understand is why are people so prone to whine these days? Whining oh, and, I know. you know, people are getting whiny and weird. It's everybody is whinier and weirder than ever. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. And uh, I have an opinion, if I could say that, and it's all because of this guy that's in the Republican head. The minute he started Four, six, eight years ago, that's when America became separated and really started the whole mess of whatever you want to call that's it. That's true. Nowadays. That's true. I think you nailed it, my friend. It didn't used to be this way. Right. You know, when I grew up, when I grew up, Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan at the end of the day at five o'clock, they'd go out and have uh, a big beer. They'd split yeah. it. They'd have a big and beer. And, and they would uh, and have a dozen wings. They'd split the wings, and then they would split the big beer. They, they would get matching straws. Tip O'Neill's mm -hmm. was blue, and Ronald Reagan's was red. They'd go out, have a big beer, split a dozen wings, and then, you know, they, they would leave the politics behind at the end of the day. Because here's the thing. They were both patriotic Americans. Mm -hmm. And now that you mention that, we went the other day to the movies and saw that Reagan movie. Excellent movie. Excellent. 
everybody ought to go see it, and then we can see how to bring our country back together from now. Oh, I'm glad days. you mentioned that because I was talking with a guy yesterday who saw it, and he he also said it was a good movie. So I'm going to go see it. Yeah, I wish it, I wish that guy, you know, the guy I'm talking about. I won't mention his name because he's very sensitive. I wish I could go see that movie with that guy. I won't say his name on the air because he's so sensitive, but right. you know who I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would even buy the popcorn. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't have that much money. Well, I would buy. I wouldn't buy one of those big buckets of popcorn because I'm not made of money. But I would buy like a medium-sized popcorn and a medium-sized drink if we could mm -hmm. go and see the Reagan movie. It's an excellent movie. Okay, I'm going to go see it. I'm going to go see it with or without him. Okay. All right. Good. Hey, okay. thanks for your I call. I better get going. So th thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank you. 1132 at WNBF. This is the station. Look, we do good things here. We do positive things for everyone because we serve the community. We're all Americans. We love the country. You know, if you're um, patriotic, you're in good company because I'm patriotic. Hey, I even love Spiro Agnew during this time. I felt badly. I was the kid. I was the heartbroken kid on October 10th, 1973, who was delivering the late edition of the Evening Press that had the giant headline that said Agnew resigns. Do you think, do you think that was pleasant 51 years ago? To have to deliver the news to 71 newspaper subscribers in Endicott? That the vice president of the United States had to resign in disgrace? No. It was heartbreaking. Hi, WNBF. Good morning. You're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Good morning there, Bob. Welcome back. It's uh, Dave from Bethel. Good morning. Welcome to my show. Yeah. Yeah, I'm listening, Bob. Um, you know, <laughs> the guy mentioned country. Cl We're never going to come together, number one, as long as there's liberal progressives pushing communism. That'll never work. We'll fight back all the time. That's not going to happen. Socialism, whatever you want to call it, Marxism, there's going to be none of that. None of that. We're not allowing that, number one. Uh, number two, uh, do you notice everyone that calls in complaining about Trump, they never say what a wonderful candidate Harris is. They, they never talk about That's not the point. Her. It's How a bigger issue. Is, it's right? a bigger issue <laughs> that the, the felon who the other party has nominated. I mean, it's clear. It's not, it's not as though the nomination process was rigged. It's clear that it was a fair nomination process. So at their national convention held in old Milwaukee, they nominated a guy who was convicted of 34 felonies. That's a bigger story than anything you could possibly say about Kamala Harris. I'm talking about stories. You know, I just some reading over the weekend, uh, this writer, uh, he writes, he's a black man, and uh, he was talking about how he used to be one of those uh, naive people who thought uh, the, the American media placed the public's interest ahead of their own. So, so, so when they frame Trump as an abnormally, abnormally corrupt individual who would end democracy, he, he bought it, Bob. He bought it. So now he's changed. Now, now he's, he's back in Trump. Um, you know what he says, and he, he nails the media perfectly. He says this, journalistic professionalism has been superseded by unabashed bias as outlets propagandize for one political party to the detriment of truth. They're lying about their adversary to sway public opinion. I expect politicians to lie, but not to those who are supposed to be informing me about them. Now, that's the media, mainstream media to a T, Bob. You agree? Absolutely not. That's, to that's totally <laughs> fallacious. That, talk about something. Wow. Talk about something that was fabricated by a really bad AI program. That's totally <laughs> erroneous. I'm sure it was just, they probably just misprogrammed the artificial intelligence. But still, yeah, it's pretty... It's pretty egregious in my book. Yeah, one-sided, all against yeah. Trump. I mean, he, Everybody's against fact. him. You know, 
He, w- he would be a great whiner in chief. Everybody's against me. I'm a victim. He's like the victim in chief. Uh, you know, right. I would I would go so far as to say that guy who grew up in Queens and went to summer camp just east of Binghamton for a couple of summers, I would say he's probably been one of the luckiest 1% of Americans over the last century. And for him to be constantly whining and constantly portraying himself as a victim teaches teaches each of us a very important lesson. Bob, do you expect politicians to lie? Of course you do. But do you expect those who are supposed to be informing you about them to lie? Do you? Do you expect the media to do that? I expect the media to report. Remember they used to yeah. say they, they used to say on the Fox and then they stopped because they knew they, they uh, testified in court. One of their attorneys testified. Basically, I think it was during a, a Sean Hannity case, something to the effect, oh, our viewers know that so much of it's not true. It's just for entertainment purposes. So that's why Fox, which used to use as a catchphrase, we report, you decide, they dropped it because they knew If they kept saying on their news, we report, you decide, then somebody would say, well, then what was the attorney saying during the Hannity case that most Hannity viewers knew that some of the stuff he was propagating was untrue and it was just out there for entertainment purposes? That's why they don't say, we report, you decide, because it should be, we entertain and you laugh or something. That's 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 their point. They're there for when entertainment did, purposes. When did 100% of the media all become opinion writers? We never asked for that. That isn't what it's supposed 100% to be. 100% of the media are not opinion writers. That is, that is false. 100% of the U.S. media are not opinion writers. I don't know what the percentage is, but a high percentage of journalists are in the business of disseminating factual information. So when you say 100% of the media basically are opinionators, that's wrong. They're trying hard, Bob. No, they're not. Most journalists aren't trying hard to keep you misinformed. Most journalists are doing their best to keep you accurately informed. Right. I love information without opinions. They should stick to that. Right? Right. That's not what right. it's not that's not what the United States media infrastructure is about. Do you understand how the US economy works? Do you think Fox News Channel would be the most powerful name in opinion if they all they did was stick to the facts? If they canceled, if Fox News Channel canceled their opinion shows, the shows that run in prime time, and they canceled the opinion shows, and instead of running opinion shows, they ran three hours of news instead. Do you think they still would be the most watched news channel? Probably not, Bob. You're right. You're- yeah, they wouldn't. And that's the point. The point about the U.S. media infrastructure is it needs money. The people, you may say, U.S. news organizations are being run by a bunch of liberals. I can't speak to that. They're, run, they're being run by a bunch of capitalists. The people who run the media in this country, they're interested in one thing, maximizing quarterly profit. Uh, you're right, Bob. Yeah, and that's, take a look. Whether it's Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, Newsmax, any media organization. It's about the money. Maximize the profit for shareholders. Bob, before I go real quick, everyone will easily remember how to pronounce Kamala Harris's name. Just always think. Wait, no, don't go there. All I'm going to say is going forward, those who insist on repeatedly mispronouncing her name, those calls may be subject to premature termination. So those, and again, the people who do it, do it 
knowingly. I mean, you can tell when people are doing it, you know, once, twice, five times during a single call. You can tell what they're doing. And, you know, basically, after a while, it starts to get really tiring. There are other programs for that, right? There is, Rob. You know, people are still doing it. They're doing it. Yeah, I know. They're doing it on purpose. But, you know... If they started mispronouncing the Republican candidate's name, then people would flip out. He would start whining, and he'd be sounding really weird because people are mispronouncing his first name. But you don't hear Kamala Harris whining about it. You know that it can't be nice to constantly hear your opponents intentionally mispronouncing your name. So it must be heartbreaking for her. And clearly, she's developed a thick skin because she has to hear it day in and day out. But trust me, if the Republican candidate's first name was being mispronounced in an ongoing basis, he would be inconsolable. Bob, uh, remember about six months ago, I said to you on the air that if, if Trump does get 20% of the African-American vote, it's over? It's yeah, it's over. It's over. So I don't know what people are griping about. It's over. We have 63 days. He'll get 21% of the black vote, and then he'll, he'll be inaugurated for another term on January 20th. I'll be here reporting about it on WNBS Binghamton Now. 20% is a huge number, Bob. He's going to get 22%. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's just uh, it's just uh, to see if the transmitter is working. I'm kidding. He's not going to get 22 percent. But if he does, you know what? All all the suburban white women, 100 percent of them can vote for Harris and he'll still win with. Them. Right. But the thing is, he's not even going to get 15 percent of the black vote in this country. Mm, he will get I will say this. He's likely to get at least 50% of the black Republican vote. So blacks who are registered Republicans, I predict the majority of them will vote for him, as they should. If you're a Republican, support your candidate. He'll get 25 to 30% of the male African-American vote. Watch. Yeah, but a lot of women blacks, a lot of black women will be voting. And trust me, they're liable to show up in greater numbers than black men. So that's why, in my opinion, that's all it is. I don't have a crystal ball. In my opinion, Donald Trump is not going to get overall 20% of the black vote in November. That's my opinion. But you're right. If, if, only, if you only counted black men, might he get 20% or more? Yeah, he might. He very well could. But the thing is, I predict, and this is just an opinion, I predict more black women will vote in this year's election than black men. Yeah, and they may even show up with multiple votes in there, multiple ballots, Bob. I doubt that. I doubt that. That's not going to happen. It's 1144 at WNBF, 607-772-1290. We uh, will be listening for opinions. By the way, if you're going to be pronouncing names of presidential candidates, work on that before your call. Because if you mispronounce the first name of a presidential candidate, your call might be terminated. This is Bob Joseph, live in living color on NBF. Nick in West Windsor, you're on the air. Bob, you can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. That is so true. And that is absolutely <laughs> true. Hey, uh, the Nelson ratings have just came out, and they sent me a form, and then they want me to comment about radio. Well, I can't talk about this. I, uh, I'm serious. This is, uh, in all seriousness, when it comes to any kind of ratings, there is uh, a very, very, very important thing when it comes to broadcast ratings. Uh, I, as a... Uh, broadcaster, an employee of a company that uh, is reliant on any kind of ratings, whether it's TV or radio or anything like that. I can't, I can't even talk about it. Well, I'm not going to give you no ratings, but I'm going to tell you one thing I'm really pleased about your show, about the local and stuff you bring up, and it gives me a good feeling. And 
Okay. When I oh, do okay. Start. I thought you were going to ask me questions about ratings or engage me in conversation, which, again, because, I mean, it's a, it's a very important uh, thing for propriety. Uh, to, it's not that, by the way, you can appreciate, it's not that I don't have opinions, but obviously we, we never want to do anything that would in any way, um, you know, skew the credibility of, of these services. Oh, exactly. And I'm a longtime uh, listener and caller, and I've talked to you before, and uh, I ran into Rich David uh, the other night, and I wanted to thank you because he was on your program, and we talked about Ely Park Golf Course and how disarray it was in. And I'll tell you, it turned out 360, and that's a beautiful golf course now, thanks to you and your program and the listeners in there and what he did for that golf course and what you did for helping, you know, get the word out there because of your program. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's the type of feedback that that really um, encourages me because I I always hope that in some way, even if it's a small way, we can really make a difference. Yes, and he thanked me. He said he was like, you know, he almost went in tears because someone's saying something nice about the guy. (laughs) Yeah, well... Hey, you know, I will say this about all of our mayors. I mean, whether it's uh, Jared Graham or Rich David, Matt Ryan, uh, Richard Bucci, Juanita Crabb, even years ago when it was Al Libis, I've been always, always just appreciative that for the most part, they've been willing to, to answer our questions, whether it's on this program or sometimes off the air, just because I think they appreciate that I am working to provide accurate information. Sometimes, and I admit, sometimes uh, we're working on a story that might be challenging or, or not necessarily um, something they really wish to talk about, but they also understand from a news standpoint that it's important to get information out. And I, I am grateful that whether it's the current mayor or his predecessors, that they've, they've been willing either to come on the program or at other times uh, respond to my calls or my emails so we can report on on the issues and get the information out to everyone. Yep, I agree on that. And plus, I have to say that, uh, you know, I'm a Trump supporter. I hate to tell you, everybody out there. But uh, then again, I got to listen to these other people and their comments yeah. and what they have to say but, about the other comments. But by the way, gotta... I mean, the, the bottom line is... I'm glad that we have Trump supporters calling, and I'm glad that we have Harris supporters calling, and I'm glad if when we occasionally get uh, RFK Jr. supporters. I mean, it it matters not to me who you support; it just matters that you're willing to talk about it. Yes, and willing to agree to disagree. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. about. I honestly, I I've said this before, but I haven't said it lately. I. I appreciate, I'd rather have a show and talking with uh, more people who may disagree with my worldview than have a bunch of people who call in and say, Bob, absolutely, everything you say, I, I agree with. I mean, that's fine, but it's not that interesting. I want a more interesting show so we get diverse opinions out on the air. Yes, we got to get blood pressures going here, Bob. Hey, that's the only way we know we're alive. I appreciate your call. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Thank you. Hey, be happy you're alive. Be happy you're allowed to call in. Be happy that you can carry on a conversation on the radio in America in 2024. Martin from Binghamton, you're on the air. Yeah, hey, thanks. Um, uh, Sticking with the golf course thing, uh, yeah, that's my home course up there. Um, Actually, a spiritual place also throughout the year. I I up up there in the winter, beautiful views. But uh, speaking with with the golf tournaments, um, I see the cooler heads prevailed or somebody behind Trump had enough brains to cancel his uh, golf tournament for the J6 Awards Gala that was supposed to be at his golf course this week. They were honoring the... uh, People that uh, attack the Capitol, who he calls hostages and political prisoners. Um, he was actually going to have that at his golf course up there, and um, it, but and he was going to charge like fifteen hundred dollars a piece and stuff like that. But that, that was just ridiculous that that 
honoring these people and that now I see today's news that we're when he goes off when he goes off uh course he calls it his weaving it's a weave and he's incorporating you in there bob the bob and weave uh, <laughs> yeah well i've 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 seen when he employs his bob and weave and to me and again it's just my personal opinion i don't think it works well but hey maybe some people enjoy that i've i've seen clips where uh, during rallies or or sometimes during interviews he he doesn't seem capable of, of staying focused on one topic, but whatever. If it works for him, hey, more power to him. Appreciate your call. Thank you. Hey, that's not my style, but I know his supporters love it, and I say if you love it, enjoy. Embrace. It's 11.54, live and local, Binghamton Now with Bob Joseph. Binghamton Now with Big, breaking, shocking news. A former aide to Governor Kathy Hochul was arrested along with her husband this morning after their Long Island home was raided by the feds earlier this year. Reading a story just posted by uh, Vaughn Golden on the New York Post website. Linda Sun and her husband were arrested on Long Island, according to the FBI. The charges remain under seal. So again, the former Deputy Chief of Staff to Governor Kathy Hochul today uh, has been arrested. Actually, she's been charged with acting as an undisclosed agent of the Chinese government. Details are just coming in. Shocking news, and we'll talk more about it tomorrow on Binghamton Now. I'm Bob Joseph. Thanks for listening to us today. We'll be back tomorrow morning right here on WNBF.